welcome to TV Burp. Saddam Hussein halts work on his extension. <laughs> and Vinnie Jones, first character witness called. <laughs> well, we all saw that footage of Saddam being debriefed. Well, part of it. <laughs> oh, you flass at all? <laughs> well, maybe you should cut down on the fun size Mars bars. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to refer you to see the hygienist. You got any space next week at all? <laughs> yes, they finally found Saddam. Apparently his first words as he came out of the hole were, Is Sam still in pop idol? <laughs> there he was in a hole in the ground, but it turns out the Yanks weren't the first on the scene. <laughs> oh, dear, lovey. We have let ourselves go, haven't we? <laughs> Oh, Haven't you got a Hoover? Oh, there's really no excuse, is there? I mean, look at this extractor fan, Lovey. Feel the cake on rough. What you need? A little bit of white wine vinegar, Lovey. And a dry cloth. A little bit of that on there. Do you see, Lovey? Do you see how it cuts through the grime, Lovey? Uh, Come here, you got it, but the scars. <laughs> Isn't it strange how people end up looking like their gardens, though, eh? If I were you, I'd call the police. <laughs> the Big Read finished on BBC Two and Lord of the Rings won most popular book, which made me think, oh, maybe I'll buy that. Then I thought, nah, wait for it to come out on DVD. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier, isn't it? Easier. Oh, really, Harry? That's hardly the point of the exercise. Just shut up about books, <laughs> 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 Kilroy's been at it again. You were charged with the attempted murder of your father? I wasn't! I see. He comes from a council estate. So he's not good enough for your daughter? Who? They call you intolerant because you object to prostitutes having sex on your front doorstep? No, they don't! On the importance of being famous with Piers Morgan, we met a woman who has tattoos of Elton John all over her back. When we finish this tattoo, the last one, which will complete the back, then I'm going to get a photo done and send it off to his home address, um, put a letter in close, and what's the chances of ever meeting you? I would have thought the chances of being invited round his house were inversely proportional to the number of tattoos you've got of him on your back. <laughs> She's got Sacrifice on the top bit, she's got the lyrics of Guess That's Why They Call It The Blues a bit lower down, and even further down, she's got Candle In The Wind. <laughs> now, how long does it take for a lady to have a baby? She's been pregnant for a total of 11 years. <laughs> 11 years? Just imagine the size of that baby. <laughs> I want a rush! I want a rush! <laughs> Mummy! Where's my ball? <laughs> I want to watch your trainees! <laughs> Britain's biggest brood, the Povey family of 15 kids. Here's Mum. Look at all those lovely spices. Oh, I wonder what she's going to be cooking. She cooks, like, beef burgers, chicken nuggets, <laughs> fish fingers, and, um, fish cakes. Yeah, Mum, you got any basil for the nuggets? <laughs> Let's have a look at a shopping list. Look at all that stuff. About 96 pints of milk, 30 eggs. Yeah, I've got all of her husband's shopping list. Look, here, found it in the car park here. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine how much a holiday for 17 costs. Of course, there is one way around it. Baby has her own case. And then I try and get all the girls in one big suitcase and then all the boys in another big suitcase. Yeah, smuggle them through customs. <laughs> well, I went to the cinema to see Love Actually in the week. <laughs> I can feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. It's Body Snatchers! <laughs> in which we met a man who was recovering from the plague. The doctor said they're gonna think that you're bioterrorists. And I said, 
I'm a little lawyer from a little town. I don't even know how to spell bioterrorist, <laughs> much less be one. Yeah, you look how I feel. <laughs> What's the worst job you ever had? Testing the blood of thousands of rats and fleas. Yeah, that's a nice job. Fleeing blood duty. <laughs> Going away for Christmas at all? Anything nice planned? <laughs> Who do you think's gonna win Pop Idol? <laughs> it's no surprise to see Sam go out. <laughs> Need anything for the weekend at all? <laughs> Wait a minute, I recognize that bloke. Going away for Christmas at all? <laughs> Anything nice planned? Who do you think's gonna win Pop Idol? <laughs> I always think if you're a rat, it's important to keep up with what diseases you might carry. So if there's a new notice, you should waste no time in reading it. Oh, there's a new notice. I must read it to find out what I might have. Oh, no. let's have a look. Where is it? Oh, plague. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> but you know, there's an even worse disease out there. Worse even than the plague. Londoner Mark Corson has just become another victim of the most successful parasite ever. There was something really wrong, there was something nasty in my body. Mick and Jagger it disease! <laughs> Isn't me or a baby's learning to speak that much earlier these days? Hello, gorgeous. Do you want to help me decorate the Christmas tree? Yes. <laughs> it's Emmerdale! And there's a new thief on the block. Well, he said he'd only be a minute. That was about half an hour ago. There's a horse going around stealing stuff. <laughs> We've managed to get some footage of the horse thief in action. Give me all the sugar lumps you've got, or I'll start running round the shop. We're right out of sugar lumps. We're expecting a delivery tomorrow. I'm warning you! <laughs> all right. No, no, all right. Nice horse. Here. In the bag! In the bag! In the bag! <laughs> What's the best way to describe David Dickinson? Big flush that smells of leather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the other big story on Emmerdale? No, I'm afraid the vet's on calls all day. Oh, a sick pig. I see. Sick pig on Emmerdale! Sick pig on Emmerdale! Mr. Smith is at Ridge Farm, and he says the pig's getting worse. It's getting worse! It's getting worse! Let's have a look at it, then. Hello, Mr. Smith. Have you met our new receptionist? Looks fine to me. Doesn't look sick at all. Time waster. <laughs> He's just trying to bunk off. It knows it was due at the abattoir, so it's thrown a sickie. <laughs> Good time waster. Taking up valuable time that could be spent on other animals, like a goldfish. I've said I'm sorry. If you could just give me your address, I'll make sure... He I'm looks best. as right as rain, too. <laughs> Who takes a goldfish to the vet, anyway? <laughs> They're either dead or alive, aren't they? <laughs> Maybe a brief spell where he's swimming about near the top on his side. <laughs> That's basically when you should be calling the priest. Well, the rule of thumb with goldfish is upright, fine, on its side of the top, dying, on its side of the bottom, dead. <laughs> Swimming about like that, well, that's a goldfish in tip-top A1 condition. <laughs> Maybe he's brought the goldfish in to be put down. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's turned nasty. <laughs> they can't give you much of a bite, but they can stare at you, can't they? <laughs> Make you feel uneasy. <laughs> Make you sick of that goldfish in its stupid mind games. But he cares enough about it to have it put down humanely. How do you do that? Well, you hold an ice cube over its stupid, manipulative face. <laughs> but it was a sad day in the vets for the owners of Murphy the dog. And I was touched by the sensitive way in which Emmerdale handled the subject of a much-loved pet dying unexpectedly. Can we see you? Of course. Follow me. <laughs> yes, sir. It's in the freezer next to chicken nuggets, all right? <laughs> yeah, you can take it for cremation, but you'll have to thaw him out first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Four minutes on defrost in the microwave. Or leave him on the radio for half an hour. Yeah. You know, I have the greatest respect for the clergy, you know. Take this bishop, very clever man. He can balance two marbles on his head. <laughs> I 
Tell you what, though, I can't wait till next time on the bill. Next time on the bill. What's up? Oh, I've got a cramp. <laughs> Very exciting. Cramp. <laughs> Someone else develops a stitch. Oh, I can't wait. And if the bill is the smoked salmon of TV cop shows, then Mersey Beat is the pilchard. <laughs> what are the words to that Christmas song? Dog crap through me letterbox, bricks through me window, me missus on Valium. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> Pop idol now. <laughs> it was an uneasy moment for Foxy this weekend. Dick only meant it as a joke, but poor Foxy was clearly worried. Now, the first time the judges outnumber the contestants, so maybe it's time we've ordered one of them off. What do you think? Which one would it be? That's a joke, right? That's a joke. Yeah? Yeah. Time now for the final instalment of our regular soap at home with the Pop Idol judges. Uh, Let my Pop Idol live! Brendan, what do you want from us? I want you to be my daddy. <laughs> it's the right monster there, Simon. <laughs> Simon? Oh, I, oh, I didn't realise you got another bird round. <laughs> um, gorgeous. All right, Brendan, I'll give you one week of attention. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. That was more like karaoke. You're in big trouble this week. Very good. You know, Brendan, you've taught me over this last week that people can be different. That we should celebrate those differences. It's those little differences that make us all special. And as part of this process, I've realized that I've never really been happy with the way I am. Simon? <laughs> I'm just up to the post office with Pete. He's lost his shoes again. Nikki? Yes, Simon? I want a sex change. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was that Simon became Simone, making him free to marry Brendan. And they were all due to live happily ever after. That is, until Foxy turned up. It's the occasion where a chubby man with a beard makes a rare appearance. But who is better, Father Christmas or Saddam Hussein? There's only one way to find out. Fine! Go on, Saddam! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on. See you after the break. Go on, Saddam! You went round to Hugh Fernley Witting Stores for lunch, and he served you a whole horse. <laughs> Welcome back. The news just in. Cheeky girls meet up with agent to plan the year ahead. <laughs> Saddam's wife gets to keep the hole. <laughs> and a bit of a mix-up as Prince Charles turns up to the wrong event. 
He went to Sprout's Personality of the Year. <laughs> and isn't it strange how people end up not looking like the thing they're standing next to? <laughs> oh, sorry, I've just been ordering my money to fit in with the Queen's operation on her face. <laughs> Understanding future wars now on Discovery Civilization, which gives us an insight into how wars will be conducted in the uh, future. His mechanical cohorts in various stages of development look a little like, well, a lot like mini battle tanks. Yeah, I can see that. Or free ranging farm equipment. Yeah, I can see that. Or washing machines run amok. <laughs> not sure, not sure. Just like a washing machine if it had wheels, an engine, and a gun on top. <laughs> the other major insight was, in the future, all soldiers will walk like John Inman. <laughs> Collie now, and Nick Tilsley was required to knock a wall down with a sledgehammer. Sometimes he just doesn't seem to know his own strength. What's happened here? Oh, it's somebody's idea of a practical joke. <laughs> Croaking, anyone? <laughs> He does manage to knock the wall down, yeah. Takes him three years, but he does it. Then he's got the task of carting the lot away. Oh, is this is a job application for... They do fold up small, then, walls, don't they? <laughs> he's gone to all the trouble of separating the sand up into his own bag. <laughs> Angela is still missing his estranged husband, Tommy, though. He's in intensive care. And if she wants Sorry. to lure him back, she should think about shaving that beard off. <laughs> It's Hagrid from the Harry Potter films. <laughs> Opportunity, the winner's story now, in which we catch up with Jane and Denise, who won the opportunity, <laughs> the chance, to sing with the English National Opera and find out how they've been getting on. You've got your work cut out. It's 12 hours a day, all right? Done. Yeah, maybe she'd do better if she didn't have that tap up her nose. Nathan <laughs> has insisted that both be given urgent coaching by opera language experts. They'll be singing in French, German, English and Italian. Yeah. Take the tap out your nose, love. <laughs> now, I don't know much about music, but is this violin making the right noise? Maybe a bit of bad news in store for a voice coach, though. There's someone waiting to speak to her. I think what they've done already has been extraordinary. It's the Grim Reaper um, look. <laughs> Looking through the glass, <laughs> waiting to pounce. It's not all doom and gloom. At least Denise got to meet Prince Philip, who was incredibly interested in how she was getting on. Everything, all of this is just worlds and worlds away, as you can imagine. <laughs> well, nice to see you. Lovely to meet you. Holiday Round My Bedroom on Channel 4 now, in which Jamie J. Johnson decided to spend a holiday in his bedroom. And on his travels, he came upon things that he'd forgotten all about, like stains. I arrived at one stain that was left from when I spilled a drink when kissing with an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Eight months later, I still haven't scrubbed it off. It was left as a sort of sentimental souvenir of a feeling since faded. Yeah, I wouldn't want to share a flat with him. Huh? A red wine stain? No, no, it's a nostalgic souvenir of a feeling long since faded. Yeah, just clean it up, would you? After that, it's your turn to empty the bins. The bins? No, no. You mean the sentimental memento of a long-lost emotion. Yeah, you haven't got any bog roll, either. He then took to looking out the window at passers-by. I went to my window and, feeling I really was on holiday, began waving to passers-by. Some of the strangers waved back, seemingly happy to take a holiday from London's usual rush hour coldness. Some ignored me, two people told me not to jump, and one person told me to F off. Yeah, sorry about that, Jamie. <laughs> EastEnders now, and not everyone takes kindly to carol singers. Those carol singers are doing some sort of concert in the square. <laughs> and where's Den off to? I'm going to be lounging in the summer cell for the next few days. What? I'm going back to Spain in a week. Yeah, Spain, or Dick Whittington at the Grand Opera House <laughs> Belfast, as it's also known. Which brings us to the award for Best Actor, and the nominations are... Bet Lynch for Coronation Street. 
Cardiac arrest. What's happening? Coronary care. No, what's happening? <laughs> Fred Elliott, also for Coronation Street. See you then. <laughs> and Marlon from Emmerdale. Hello. Hello. Maybe I'm waiting. What about you, you gorgeous, delectable, mesmerising, tantalising creature? Yeah, I'm the sun and I'm grass. It's an <laughs> living thing. Do I look like I care? I only moved in here because there was nowhere else to go. You call yourselves a family, eh? I'd rather live in a ditch. <laughs> and the award goes to... Marlon from Emmerdale. Uh, well, unfortunately, Marlon cannot be with us tonight, but he has sent this special message. I'll still love you. Moo! <laughs> of course, there is another great actor called Marlon. And so, I come to you, Don Corleone, for justice. Bonus error. You didn't want me as a friend. I can't recall the last time you invited me around to your house. Instead, you come to me on my daughter's wedding and ask me to commit murder for money. <laughs> You're a civil servant, but it burns when you do wee wee. <laughs> yes, that's all from us for this series. We'll be back in February, and we thought as a special treat we could get the two ladies who won opportunity to sing us out, uh, take us out on a cultural high. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Denise Lee and Jane Gilchrist. <laughs> Come on. You watch Harry Hill? <laughs> What's the best way to describe David Dickinson? Big flash that smells of leather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the other big story on Emmerdale? No, I'm afraid the vet's on calls all day. Oh, a sick pig. I see. Sick pig on Emmerdale! Sick pig on Emmerdale! Mr. Smith is at Ridge Farm. And he says the pig's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Let's have a look at it then. Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. Have you met our new receptionist? Looks fine to me. Doesn't look sick at all. Time waster. <laughs> it's just trying to bunk off. It knows it was due at the abattoir, so it's thrown a sickie. <laughs> Good time waster. Taking up valuable time that could be spent on other animals, like a goldfish. I've said I'm sorry. If you could just give me your address, I'll make sure... He looks as right as rain, too. <laughs> Who takes a goldfish to the vets, anyway? <laughs> They're either dead or alive, aren't they? <laughs> well, maybe a brief spell where he's swimming about near the top on his side. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically when you should be calling the priest. Well, the rule of thumb with goldfish is upright, fine, on its side of the top, dying, on its side of the bottom, dead. <laughs> Swimming about like that, well, that's a goldfish in tip-top A1 condition. <laughs> Maybe he's brought the goldfish in to be put down. <laughs> Maybe it's turned nasty. <laughs> they can't give you much of a bite, but they can stare at you, can't they? <laughs> Make you feel uneasy. <laughs> Sick of that goldfish in its stupid mind games. But he cares enough about it to have it put down humanely. How do you do that? Well, you hold an ice cube over its stupid, manipulative face. <laughs> but it was a sad day in the vets for the owners of Murphy the dog. And I was touched by the sensitive way in which Emmerdale handled the subject of a much loved pet dying unexpectedly. Can we see you? Of course. Follow me. Ha, ha, ha. 
You know, it's, uh, it's in the freezer next to chicken nuggets, right? Yeah, you can take it for cremation, but you'll have to thaw him out first. Yeah, yeah. Four minutes on defrost in the microwave. Or leave him on the radio for half an hour. Yeah. You know, I have the greatest respect for the clergy, you know. Take this bishop, very clever man. He can balance two marbles on his head. <laughs> Tell you what, though, I can't wait till next time on the bill. Next time on the bill. What's up? Oh, I've got a cramp. <laughs> Very exciting. Cramp. Pints of milk. Thirty eggs. Yeah, I've got all of her husband's shopping list. Look, here, yeah, found it in the car park. Here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Imagine how much a holiday for seventeen costs. Of course, there is one way round it. Baby has her own case, and then I try and get all the girls in one big suitcase, and then all the boys in another big suitcase. Yes, yeah, smuggle them through customs. <laughs> well, I went to the cinema to see Love Actually in the week. <laughs> I can feel it in my fingers. I feel it in my toes. Body Snatchers, <laughs> in which we met a man who was recovering from the plague. The doctor said they're going to think that you're bioterrorist. And I said, I'm a little lawyer from a little town. I don't even know how to spell bioterrorist, <laughs> much less be one. Yeah, you look how I feel. <laughs> What's the worst job you ever had? Testing the blood of thousands of rats and fleas. Yeah, that's a nice job. Flea and blood duty. <laughs> going away for Christmas at all? Anything nice planned? <laughs> Who do you think's going to win Pop Idol? It's no surprise to see Sam go out. Need anything for the weekend at all? Wait a minute. I recognise that bloke. Going away for Christmas at all? Anything nice planned? Who do you think's going to win Pop Idol? I always think if you're a rat, it's important to keep up with what diseases you might carry. So if there's a new notice, you should waste no time in reading it. Oh, there's a new notice. I must read it to find out what I might have. Oh, no. let's have a look. Where is it? Oh, plague. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> but you know, there's an even worse disease out there. Worse even than the plague. Londoner Mark Corson has just become another victim of the most successful parasite ever there was something really wrong or something nasty in my body mick jagger disease <laughs> isn't me or a baby's learning to speak that much earlier these days hello gorgeous do you want to help me decorate the christmas tree yes <laughs> it's emmerdale and there's a new thief on the block I said he'd only be a minute. That was about half an hour ago. There's a horse going round stealing stuff. <laughs> We've managed to get some footage of the horse thief in action. Give me all the sugar lumps you've got, or I'll start running round the shop. We're right out of sugar lumps. We're expecting a delivery tomorrow. I'm warning you! <laughs> Feel it in my fingers. <laughs> I feel it in my toes. It's body snatchers. <laughs> in which we met a man who was recovering from the plague. The doctor said they're gonna think that you're bioterrorist. And I said, I'm a little lawyer from a little town. I don't even know how to spell bioterrorist, <laughs> much less be one. Yeah, you look how I feel. <laughs> What's the worst job you ever had? Testing the blood of thousands of rats and fleas. Yeah, that's a that's nice job. Flea and blood duty. <laughs> going away for Christmas at all? Anything nice planned? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think's going to win Pop Idol? <laughs> it's no surprise to see Sam go out. <laughs> Need anything for the weekend at all? <laughs> Wait a minute. I recognise that bloke. <laughs> going away for Christmas at all? <laughs> anything nice planned? Who do you think is going to win Pop Idol? <laughs> I always think if you're a rat, it's important to keep up with what diseases you might carry. So if there's a new notice, you should waste no time in reading it. Oh, 
there's a new notice. I must read it to find out what I might have. Oh, no. Let's have a look. Where is it? Oh, plague. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> but, you know, there's an even worse disease out there. Worse even than the plague. Londoner Mark Corson has just become another victim of the most successful parasite ever. There was something really wrong, something nasty in my body. Mick Jagger disease! <laughs> Is it me or a baby's learning to speak that much earlier these days? Hello, gorgeous. Do you want to help me decorate the Christmas tree? Yes. <laughs> it's Emmerdale! And there's a new thief on the block. Well, they said he'd only be a minute. That was about half an hour ago. There's a horse going round stealing stuff. <laughs> We've managed to get some footage of the horse thief in action. Give me all the sugar lumps you've got, or I'll start running round the shop. We're right out of sugar lumps. We're expecting a delivery tomorrow. I'm warning you! <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, all right. Nice horse. Here. In the bag! In the bag! In the bag! <laughs> What's the best way to describe David Dickinson? Big flash that smells of leather. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And the other big story on Emmerdale? No, I'm afraid the vet's on calls all day. Oh, a sick pig. I see. Sick pig on Emmerdale! Sick pig on Emmerdale! Mr. Smith is at Ridge Farm, and he says the pig's getting worse. It's get oh, it's oh, I didn't realise you got another bird around. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. All right, Brendan. I'll give you one week of attention. One more time. That was more like karaoke. You're in big trouble this week. Very good. You know, Brendan, you've taught me over this last week that people can be different. That we should celebrate those differences. It's those little differences that make us all special. And as part of this process, I've realized that I've never really been happy with the way I am. Simon? <laughs> I've just talked to the post office with Pete. He's lost his shoes again. Nicky? Yes, Simon? I want a sex change. <laughs> So it was that Simon became Simone, making him free to marry Brendan. And they were all due to live happily ever after. That is, until Foxy turned up. Yeah, it's the occasion where a chubby man with a beard makes a rare appearance. But who is better, Father Christmas or Saddam Hussein? There's only one way to find out. Fine! Go on, Saddam! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on. See you after the break. Go on, Saddam! You went round to Hugh Fernley Whitting Stones for lunch, and he served you a whole horse. It's all special. And as part of this process, I've realized that I've never really been happy with the way I am. Simon? <laughs> I've just talked to the post office with Pete. He's lost his shoes again. 
Nikki. I want a sex change. <laughs> and so it was that Simon became Simone, making him free to marry Brendan. And they were all due to live happily ever after. That is, until Foxy turned up. Year, it's the occasion where a chubby man with a beard makes a rare appearance. But who is better, Father Christmas or Saddam Hussein? There's only one way to find out. Fine! Go on, Saddam! Go on! Go on! Go on! Go on. See you after the break. Go on, Saddam! Go on. You went down to Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's for lunch and he served you a whole horse? <laughs> Welcome back to News Just In. Cheeky girls meet up with agent to plan the year ahead. <laughs> Saddam's wife gets to keep the hole. <laughs> and a bit of a mix-up as Prince Charles turns up to the wrong event. He went to Sprout's personality of the year. <laughs> Isn't it strange how people end up not looking like the thing they're standing next to? <laughs> oh, sorry, I've just been altering my money to fit in with the Queen's operation on her face. <laughs> Understanding future wars now on Discovery's civilization, which gives us an insight into how wars will be conducted in the uh, future. His mechanical cohorts, in various stages of development, look a little like, well, a lot like mini battle tanks. Yeah, I can see that. Or free-ranging farm equipment. Yeah, I can see that. Or washing machines run amok. <laughs> not sure, not sure. It's just like a washing machine if it had wheels, an engine and a gun on top. The other major insight was, in the future, all soldiers will walk like John Inman. <laughs> Now, and Nick T 